<laughs> no, Bette David. <laughs> Did you ever think you were making it? I feel I'm so close, I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, why would you bet on Goliath when we got Bet David? Value payment, giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we get no value to hate. It's how they run, homie. Look what I become. I'm the, I'm the one. Every, I'm in LA. So. Okay, yeah. Okay. Now we're okay. now we're. <laughs> so listen, today we have a special podcast. Let me explain to you why this is special. Uh, with all the uh, tragic events taking place in Iran and the courageous protests are going on around the world, specifically in Iran, women leading the way with the youth, we decided to do a special podcast to just discuss the topic of Iran. And we got four special guests here with us. One of them, this is our Assyrian Adam. We call him Vinny Oshana. Salam. Okay? Who's here with us. Second, we have Nazanin Noor, who made some strong comments about New York Times, I want to say last week, that went viral. Everybody was talking about it. Everybody was sending it to us. Mm. If you don't know who she is, her background, she's appeared on Prime TV US, shows like Madam Secretary, Criminal Minds, Political Minds. She's also the creative mind behind Persian Mom and many other things. On top of that, she graduated from George Mason University with a degree in government and international politics. Her double major is in communication, but I love her minor. Yeah. Her minor is in <laughs> media criticism. How awesome is that minor, yeah. right? Which is appropriate we, for New York Times. I like it. We criticize a lot of things. That's good. We're going to do a lot more of it today, hopefully. And then we have uh, Morteza Alborzi, okay, former world champion, 12 uh, consecutive Iran national champion. Head coach for Iran and U.S. national karate team and over 17,000 students, of which over 1,200 black belts. He was a former political prisoner and activist 24-7 the last 43 years. And uh, his uh, uh, obsession is to make sure he brings freedom back to Iran so we can go back to Iran one day and celebrate uh, the rich history that Iran has. And you see him right there on the cover of the Masters uh, Magazine Martial Arts. I think you're a ninth degree black belt, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. So, Mortez Alberti, thank you Pat, so much for being on. he shook my hand in the green room and almost my knuckles broke. I told you, don't do it. I don't know why I, you did it. We so gave I you the warning. make you angry. It <laughs> hurts so bad. Well, the whole thing is we're safe. That's the most important <laughs> He's thing. He's on our here. side. We are safe. And then last but not least, I, there's only one way to introduce the last person that we have here. And it's a picture. Can we just show one picture so this will <laughs> oh, explain my God. who the last person is? So, the, t the guy to the right is... A guy named Patrick Bed David. Yeah. Okay. And the guy to the left is my sister, <laughs> Paulette <laughs> Bed David Sabatimani, who's also here with us. And the reason why I wanted to also bring my sister Paulette is because she's got not only strong opinions, but she's got a different perspective because she lived in Iran uh, up until uh, uh, 16 years old. And she was probably old enough to remember the revolution taking place. So you probably have some history there. Memories there, Paula, to share with everybody else. And that picture does it. I mean, that picture should pretty much tell you how this whole thing got started with that hijab. Look at how she's wearing that hijab because not because of choice, but because of force, because it's what's normal in the country that we were born and raised in. So having said that, uh, we want to welcome everybody here on the podcast. So it's thank good you. to have you guys on. Thanks, thank you for yes. having us. Thanks for having and, us. And uh, as usual, we have Tyler here as well. Tyler is not Iranian. But he's got the beard of an Iranian, yes. so we're going to make it work. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's get right into it. So Nazanin, uh, 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 Morteza, Paulette, we'll start with you guys first. Um, when you first heard the news of what's going on with this, you got really passionate. You've been passionate about this for a minute here. Obviously, your degree even says what your passion has been around this for a while. What happened with this one where you suddenly went out there, you gave your rant with New York Times, and now everybody is curious to know where they're saying, well, this doesn't make any sense. They're saying it's economical. They're not saying it's because of women. They're not saying because of that. Give us your thoughts on what's going on with Iran and how you all of a sudden wanted to voice your opinion about this. Well, I think I've voiced my opinion on Iran for many years, but I feel like I've held back like uh, many people in the diaspora do for many different reasons. For those that don't know, some people fear persecution. Even that's how far the Islamic Republic has its reach because it instills fear even in people that don't live there. Um, and especially if you have family and friends there. And then this specific case, I feel like for Masa Jina Amini, it was the same thing that got Iranians out in the streets. It was like the straw that broke the camel's back. It was like, really? Again? And this violently? Um, and then the New York Times thing was, I read the article. First of all, the headline was very misleading. 
Um, and what was the body of the article? Of course, there's things in there that are factual. It's sure, correct. Of the, course. The, the economy is bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but the economy isn't bad just because of what's going on right now. It's been in a steep decline for like a couple decades. So there's a lot of things at play. And again, I'm not an economic expert, so I can't really speak to that. But that's not the whole story. So many journalist friends of mine reached out to me privately and then some of them went public too, which to me I thought was interesting. I was like, okay, so it's not just me that is getting really upset about this. People are looking at this that are in that profession and saying, well, the headline was misleading. If you read parts of the article, it makes it seem like Iran has some sort of functioning democracy and that there's these legitimate elections, which there is not. And um, I couldn't fathom how you could see all of the footage coming out of Iran and then go write an entire piece that it's in a well-respected, uh, in many circles, publication that's supposed to inform the masses. And so a lot of people are getting their information and knowledge from this. And if they read this, they'll, they will walk away thinking, oh yeah, it's the economy. Not that people don't want to live under a theocracy, not that people are screaming Zan Zendigi Azadi, which is woman life freedom, mm -hmm. that they want, women want you know, bodily autonomy and human rights. <laughs> they don't want to live under a theocracy. They're literally screaming death to the dictator, death to the regime. And all of those things got the equivalent of one little soundbite. And like, I would say 50 to 60% of the article focused on, well, they're out because of the economy. And let's speak to so-and-so who owns this bazaar here, which again, very valid, but that's not what pushed people out into the streets. So. Yeah, I, w I want to read this. So for some of you that maybe haven't read this article, what, what page is it on? Tyler, if you can tell me what page it is so I can go right to it. It should be eight. Eight or okay, nine. so let me read this article. I'm not going to read you the whole thing, but I think a couple of the snippets out of it so you can kind of uh, follow what story she's talking about. I got eight here. I'm on eight and I don't see it. Tell me what page is it on. It's one of the pages that we had earlier. Just the one you handed. Oh, to no, six. Way. Page six oh, right six. at the top. Out of reach dreams in a sickly economy. Yeah, let me read this to you. So. Okay, so this is New York Times, October 2nd. Out of reach dreams in a sickly economy provoked a rage in Iran, right? When Nader, a 41-year-old construction company employee in Tehran, shops for groceries, he constantly adjusts his list as he wanders the aisles, double-checking prices and factoring them into his budget. His basket keeps shrinking as inflation surges. A year ago, he gave up red meat and chicken. Now, with Nader's savings gone, and his rent having doubled, even cheese and eggs are becoming luxuries. I can't keep up with the rising prices, no matter how hard I run. Um, you know, as a taxi driver to afford clothes, the school books for his son, and a telephone interview. Our demand is for the government to fix the economy, to understand that we are breaking under financial pressure. Nader, like tens of thousands of Iranians, taking part in a nationwide protest against the government in the past two weeks, has plenty of grievances to choose from, soaring prices, high unemployment, corruption political repression, and the law requiring women to dress modestly modestly, and cover their hair. That last issue set off unrest when a young woman, Mahsa Amini, died two weeks ago in the custody of the morality police. But the story state of Iran's economy is one of the main forces sparing Iranians into streets to demand change. So you, you read something like this, you know, and, and it's not like it's a small newspaper. This is New York Times. Now, um, a lot of people have lost a lot of trust for New York Times on, you know, opposing sides, you know, whatever the aisle. Even Bill Maher's not talking uh, highly about New York Times today that he did before. Uh, Morteza, when you read something like this and you see what, what's going on with an, an, an America, a lot of people are going to read this saying, oh, all these videos are just videos. It's not really that bad. It's just another country in the Middle East that they're protesting. That goes on all the time. It's fine. Let's not pay attention to it. Let's pay attention to other things. Why is this so important for people that are not Iranian to pay attention to? Uh, look, Patrick John, as I mentioned, most of my uh, stories on Instagram, Facebook, this is not happening because of what happened to Massa. This was a bomb waiting, waiting 43 years for a country that was second in gas, third in oil, fifth in precious metals, fifth in gold, uh, fifth strongest army in the world with a passport that 157 doesn't need a visa to go to 157 countries. Pre-revolution. You're talking Pre 77, exactly. 76. Exactly. Right. right. And on 77 and 78 was the second, not third, second most visitor uh, tourist that visit our country. Turning to the point that now people finding food in a trash can. I get emotional. I talk about it even. That country, which 
provided so many geniuses, 5,500 professors in United States universities, Iranian. Wow. One third of NASA are Iranian. Now the Sh uh, uh, Sharif University is getting surrounded by police, and we know what's gonna happen to that, those kids. Hmm. We know what's gonna happen to them. When you he, say we know, yeah, because just assume people don't know what will happen to those kids. What exactly happened to two events before that? What happened? You think right now 185, 87 or 89 people got killed. Mm -hmm. No. You're asking me, three, 4,000 people got killed. Because wow. all those people that got arrested, there is no sign. And like a last time, they find the body of 2,100 of them. It's not just that people got killed in the street. Mm. I got a picture this morning from the doctor. We have a, a medical clinic underground. We're uh, uh, basically- In Tehran? Yeah, in Tehran. Okay. We're, we're helping them with the money that these doctors uh, serving people that they got shot and so on. Mm -hmm. so because if they step in a hospital, immediately they get arrested. They're, they're not even letting go in. The doctor posted a picture said, by the law, you cannot come to hospital and shot at the injured. And he put a picture on it that they went to the hospital and do it. Now imagine what they're going to do it to them uh, when they take it to the uh, custody and jail. May I say something about that? Because I got messages from inside of Iran about the hospital situation. Somebody, a couple people told me, oh, my so-and-so is the chief at this hospital and at this hospital. Mm -hmm. And they were warning patients not to use their real names. Because if you come in with any type of wound that shows that you were maybe in a protest or hit at a protest, you could get arrested. And he's talking about Shadif University, that just happened a few days ago for your listeners, um, where they, this is, it's like the Harvard, the MIT in Iran, you have the best and brightest students there and they just surrounded it, the government forces and chased them out. They got blocked into the garage. Some people made it out. Some people got arrested, beaten. They're in, a lot of students are still in jail, which is why a lot of students are protesting at universities right now, asking for their friends and their classmates to be released. I mean, that's pretty wild. When you say that to a regular person, they're like, what are you talking about? That's really the life right now in Iran. And New York Times is saying, you know, it's a fair election, you know, Raisi that he had last year and lowest amount of turnout in elections since 1979. And, you know, stats come out and, hey, this was already predetermined. So for, for Iran, let, let me even take a step back. You know, why does Iran matter so much to you? Okay, pull it for you. We were born in Iran. Okay, we lived there for a while. But we're not, we're Assyrian, we're Armenian, we've been in America for quite some time. What's so special about Iran to you? Memories, you wanna go back and there's so much history in Iran. Uh, I remember when the revolution happened, I was actually researching it and uh, I came across an article that back in uh, 1979, women protesting forced hijab. So there were about 100,000 women that were on the streets fighting that they didn't wanna have hijab. Right? And this is right after Khomeini in March said that yep. the job's going to be mandatory. It says on uh, on March 8, 1979, yep. more than 100,000 women gathered on the street to protest her job. And I remember mom used to take us to, uh, there was a street called Gandhi. It's still there. Yep. And they had like the first malls and mm -hmm. everything came there. And to get us um, Italian ice cream, right? And so we're there and all of a sudden, back then they would call it Sepah. It was Sarullah. They used to call mm. the Sarullahs, yes, Sarullah, right? Yeah. And they were in the cars and they were just chasing to see which, who. What's who, Sarullah? What's Sarullah Sar is... Uh, yeah, it, it was a. It's like the police of hijab. Okay. Police of hijab. Okay. Right? What now is, is the Gashta Air? It's the Gashta Air yeah, It's just the same. It's the same thing. It's same just thing, different. different name. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Just want to make sure yeah. the listeners know what we're talking about. Correct. Okay. And then we were out, and this was you were three. I was about uh, nine, and mom. We were walking on the street, and then the morality police charged at mom and said, what are you doing? You're raising a prostitute. Her hair is causing men to sin. And so- You remember this? I remember that. The way she- Nine years old. And mom was fighting back. Don't talk to me like, because just like this mask that became mandate all of a sudden. Yeah. That's why I had so many flashbacks when the mask came back and I'm like, you gotta fight this. This is all psychological fight. So anyways, um, then after that, Mom got me the first Rusadi, hijab. How old were you? I was you? 10. 10 I was nine and a half, 10. And, and was it like, was it something for you, Paulette, where it was like, I'm, I'm a woman now, I'm wearing a hijab? Or was it kind of like, <laughs> oh, I don't want to wear this? Or was it like, everybody does it, so I, I'm doing it as well? What, how, do you remember no. like what yeah. it was for you? 
It wasn't none of those. It was, we just have to protect ourselves to be safe because kids were missing. And the, the back then, because in 1967, uh, family protection law was repealed. Uh, 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 there was a family protection law that protected women. Mm -hmm. And they said the um, um, age of marriage for women went up to 15. Then Shah and uh, their cabin, cabinet mm -hmm. took it up to... Uh, uh, what is that sound, by the way? Do you guys hear that sound yes, or no? Yes, I do. Uh, Malik, is that from your side or no? Because we hear the sound and it's uh, I'm off. I don't have anything. I'm on airplane mode. Okay, can you check to see if your own phone is off? Or off? Off. Mine is off. Mine is see off. if yours is a, a it's computer. It's playback. I can hear it. It's somebody's, playback. It's somebody's YouTube is playing back. Yeah. But I don't have anything. Yeah, it's not me here is, uh, either. Okay. Mine is off. Okay, keep going. So, keep going. So you were saying, so uh, uh, you were explaining so the story. The, the age of marriage yep. went up to 15, 15 and yep. then 18. And then after the revolution, they dropped it down to nine, and then they took it up to 13. So for mom was, we just have to do what they say because I don't want them to come and snatch my kid. That was the only reason why. That was the only reason why. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure, follow the rules, conform, so they leave us alone. Exactly. Conformity is becoming the norm. And the 15 became 13. And in some cases today, women... In Iran, the whole concept of hijab is that you become a woman mm -hmm. at nine years old, and you hear stories about 52-year-old men marrying a nine-year-old, which yep. is some random yeah. stories what? when you hear that. It's not as common. prevalent yeah. or common in Iran. Mm -hmm. It isn't, If you know, to keep it factual. Yes, it happens, but it happens more in Do you realize countries. what you just said, how weird that is to me to even hear? To even say it's not prevalent, meaning it doesn't happen every day, I totally understand. Oh, no, it's terrible. But the fact that, it, like, I explained my 10-year-old son, I said, Tico, can, uh, 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 I want you to think about what, what is okay in Iran that it happens once in a while. He said, what's yeah. that? I said, how old's your sister? Six. I said, can you imagine your nine-year-old daughter? Let's just say Senna, nine-year-old sister. Senna becomes nine. She's okay to marry a 52-year-old. He's like, what are you talking about that? 10-year-old <laughs> yeah, kid. The, the, the conditions over there are so... But here's a challenge. Like You're, you're almost conditioned to think it's normal. Uh, how about to you? What does Iran mean to you? Because for you, if I... Uh, uh, doing the research with your family, I think your parents came here in 75. I think they went back. They came back. If I'm not mistaken, I'm trying to get some of the stories. Mm, yeah, they came in 75 to go to university. And the, it was like a lot of Iranians. They came to get a degree and then they were going to go back to Iran. Um, but while they were... In America, the revolution happened. Um, again, I think important for your listeners to know that we went from a monarchy to a theocracy as well in 1979. Um, so they were in university, the revolution happened. And then it was like, okay, well, let's see what's going to happen after. And then the Iran-Iraq war started. Um, and then, you know, everybody in Iran, all the family was like, you guys should just stay there, especially because then I was born during the Iran-Iraq war. Um, and they were like, well, especially with a daughter, you guys should just stay in America. Mm -hmm. And that happened to a lot of families that the plan was to go back, but they just, they stayed here. So. Hey, Alborzi, how about yourself? Uh, my best memories out of my life was from that country. All the honors that I brought for the country, the, brought the flag for the country up. And then uh, when I'm thinking about jail and Evin, uh, Every second of it, I'm thinking about what is happening to these people. Mm. Uh, I was seven years poor. I have that after I left Evin, uh, although I got 49 times again arrested from one hour to one, one and a half a year. Wow. I was four times in front of uh, assassination line, wow. which uh, anytime they could make a mistake and like shoot me, right? But what I came out, when I came out, I was like, I have one mission in my life that mm. this fire doesn't going to go down on me until I see this regime go down. Because I cannot accept prostitution age in my country comes to the 12. 12 years old prostitution. 12 years old. 12 years old. Officially, yeah. they're getting paid. There are videos about it. In Mashhad, they officially, they have office. They're offering 12 years, 13 years, 14 years. You want it for an hour. You want it for a week. Oh, you're talking about Sireh? Yeah. Yeah, Sira. it's like a temporary marriage. So it's like legal in the eyes of Islam, in their eyes of Islam. Legal in the eyes of Islam. Of their yeah, Islam. And the religious reasons say this is more count of heaven for you, ladies. If you do that with yeah. the people that are coming from Iraq and, mm -hmm. you know, side countries to here, 
you give them a pleasure, you have more count of heavens. Because they come from Karbala. Yeah. Because whole, like a holy land. Karbala is? In Iraq. In Iraq. In Iraq. And it's a holy site. Got it. Okay. Uh, so she said something. She said, you know, we went from a, m- a monarchy to a theocracy. Okay. So again, everybody's heard the stories of Mossadegh. We know the stories about, you know, Mohammed Reza Shah Pahlavi. Few people know about Reza Khan, his father, how he also was in exile. And then Khomeini comes in after being in exile twice. Boom. The next thing you know, Shah leaves and Iran changes. But there were a lot of people that were for the Shah fallen. There were a lot of people that said that Shah, Shah's a bad person. You know, you got Savak, you did this. We should have had Mossadegh. We should have had this person. You know, some say Mossadegh was a CIA plant. Some say the Shah was the puppet of the West. You hear all of these things, right? And even some of the kids, whatever the kids believe in is whatever their parents told them. For the most part, you know, if you're a Christian, it's probably because your parents are Christians. If you're Muslim, you're a Muslim. If you're, you know, an LDS, sometimes you're an LDS. About 80% of the time we follow our uh, uh, our parents' uh, religion and beliefs that they have, except if there's a broken family, then typically you don't want to follow one of them because one of them left and you're kind of like, screw it, I don't want to follow your, whatever it may be, right? There's like an animosity towards a parent. Uh, how much of what, you know, we hear uh, on, on the monarchy side, the criticism it got, how much of that criticism was real? How much of that criticism, in your opinion, obviously, you know, it, it, there's only so much context we have on what we're talking about. What is the difference between a criticism it got under Shah's regime versus a criticism it got under the theocracy we've had the last 43 years? I'll go to you first. Well, I wasn't alive then, but from what I know, um, you know, so I feel like the experiences here are going to be able to speak to it better. But from, of course, what I've re- researched and I've been to Iran many times and, you know, family and all that kind of stuff, speaking to my family, um, the criticism of the Shah was valid, obviously, in the sense that it created enough Dis- dissent in his own country that people thought they wanted this revolution. Um, they didn't want what came. Some of them did. But after Khomeini came in, um, everyone was like, wait, what? This is not what you promised us. Because mm-hmm. as they can attest to, there was Khomeini would send in cassette tapes from his exile in France. Mm-hmm. And it was these sermons. Pretty and he was cassette he was saying, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was saying yeah, the original going viral. That's it was right. saying about how he was going to you know, women were going to be equal and everything was going to be great. And we're going to go back mm-hmm. to this type of a country where it's a little bit more modest. We're going to get the West out. And because people were fed up with a, a lot of people were fed up with the Shah, not everybody. Um, they were for this. And then um, your sister brought up a good point. The it's really interesting that in 1979, when Khomeini came and was and said, actually, hijab is going to be mandatory. The women were like, whoa, 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 that's not what you promised us. So the same women that were protesting now, somebody I heard said, the scholar, Kadim Sajjadpur, said the same women that protested in 1979 against the hijab, their granddaughters now are avenging them, which wow. is really, it's a really so interesting parallel. Because they were literally getting beat up in the streets as well. And they all said afterward, we didn't get what we thought we were going to get. There's actually a great documentary that if your listeners want, uh, if they want to get more familiar with Iran, it came out on HBO a few days ago or last week. It's called Hostages, Gero Gan Ha, four part, four part mini documentary series. And it shows you how we got into the hostage crisis with the Shah leaving and Carter and Khomeini and the aftermath. And it's really, really great for people who don't know that much about Iran's history. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, sh- uh- uh, Mortiza, what would you say? You know, f- uh, again, criticism pre-Shah, when Shah was there, you know, the 2,500-year uh, anniversary, he spent way too much money. Can you pull up, uh, put the Iran 2,500-year anniversary, put this big celebration. It was a big deal. And it mm-hmm. created so much criticism mm-hmm. yeah. uh, amongst people saying, why would you spend this much money? Go actually to the pictures so people can see. What it was like. Uh, yeah, go to the pictures and show actually what it was like. Uh, man, if you can show a real good one. Okay, uh, yeah, right there. A lot uh, of people participated in that a as lot well of people from part- around the country. That's right. Yeah. It was a big deal for people to be it. celebrities, mm-hmm. political leaders. You know, so some people saw that and they said, wow, look how strong Iran's wow. becoming. But some people saw that in Iran and people like Khomeini, they said, look how rich the Shah's becoming. He has all the money and you're poor and... He's taking all the money. What if we can nationalize the oil? What if we can do this? What if we can do that? What if we can have free rights? What if we can have free this? And people actually started falling for this. So, Mortiza, from your perspective, you're living there at that time. The criticism that the Shah got that led to 9 million people revolting against him versus reality compared to what happened under Khomeini. Give us the difference between the two. 
از من در فای پاتیک جان اباد دیس جشن های 2500 ساله دد یر مای برادر توک می تو سیونت ایر فورس بیس این شیراز and I live there I saw that uh, demonstration you were there I was next to the street we were la- uh, clapping for the wow. whole thing you have no idea what kind of honor he had between all these presidents and kings invited there to see our rich culture we bring it up to the f- f- world mm-hmm. that look who we are we deserve where we are and we deserve where we want to go I sort of agree with the Uh, Nazanin, when she said if the door was a little bit open, Shah would let people know all those things that they were pretending that they want to bring it, they wouldn't fall for it. They wouldn't fall for it. Mm-hmm. I was working from the ninth grade, tenth grade yeah. in a bookstore right in front of the Tehran University. It was a GB bookstore that was belongs to Enteshorat Franklin. And I was an uh, archivist. I was taking the inventory in and out. And I was uh, behind the black glass window. And I would see like how students come in and looking at this side and that side and passing, for example, Samad Behrangi's book to each other. And they were scared like if Sawak see them. Let them see that there is nothing in it. It's like a kid's yeah. book. Why are you making this guy so big that people make it that, oh, Sawak this, Sawak that. It wasn't a big deal. We made it big. Savak wasn't a big deal? It wasn't a big deal. What, what Savak did... Savak is, just to put in context, folks, Savak was Iran's CIA. That's, mm-hmm. that's what, Iran's CIA. At that time. That was trained by the CIA, by the way, and the MI6 at Any country time. have a security system. That's right, yeah. of course. Any yeah. country sure. has it, right? Sure. For the saving the uh, country, right? But point is, they were doing stupid things. They were doing like a thing that it, it wasn't a big deal at all. Is what it, I say, if... Shah would let Jose El Mier home. Get to open the door for everyone. Nobody would vote to this re- regime. Nobody. Everybody knows like what's the origin, what's the inside the regime. They closed it, closed it. People are like, oh, it must be a magic in there. Then let's go vote. But yeah, we, we saw him in the moon. All you're, of this. You're saying if he would have uh, allowed people the freedom to learn and uh, have other, other ideologies and thoughts. Exactly. Right, that he would, yeah. So he shouldn't have been afraid of two-day party, like the communist party that was coming in or any of those guys. And more important than that, Patrick John, leadership comes with a responsibility. Sure. If you're a leader, sometimes you have to say something that maybe 90% don't like it, mm-hmm. but six months from now, they adore you for saying it and standing on your position. Sure. Right? When whole thing was starting, My expectation from Shah was, as a leader of the country, that we love what he did for the country. We, we love what his father did for the country. Put his foot down and does it say, let me step out of the country, see what they're going to do. And we paid for it 43 years to become a most dry country, most poorest country. So you're saying he shouldn't have left? No, he shouldn't have left. He, sh- okay, he so, shouldn't leave. Okay, so let's process that. Let's actually go there. If he doesn't leave, what happens? You think the people weren't going to go into the palace and go in there and get him? You, you don't think that was going to take place? They couldn't story for the Sinamo Rex they did. They couldn't story for the Maidun Hivdai Shahri where they did. Because they would find out that what happened. It wasn't a 17,000 death. It was 173. They, they made these stories big and big and big. And because he was not defending, he was just acting very gentleman, very like a like a classy but person. Doesn't, but doesn't that contradict your argument to say that if you would have let the two-day party just come in and present their arguments, you know, on one end you're saying he should have let him, on the other end you're saying he, was, he wasn't paranoid enough. So if he's too paranoid, hey, 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 listen, these two-day guys, let's arrest them, put them in the jail. On the other side, no, 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 he wasn't too, uh, uh, you know, paranoid enough. Khomeini had more power than it really did. He should have really controlled it more. So it's like a, it's almost like a... That's a game, a leadership playing game. Leadership playing game. When pull, when push. <sighs> yeah, I don't know about that one. That's that's going to be a tough one for him to play. Thoughts? No, I was going to say, don't forget also the Americans' role behind mm-hmm. the scenes of all this too. Absolutely. They were They were afraid of the spread of any type of communism or anything like that. So they had a vested interest in playing the parts in the leadership. When you say American leaders, who are you referencing? Anyone in specific? No, the or? administration when... Jimmy Carter? Towards the end, yeah. Got it. 
So, got it. Well, I mean, you know, we're in the U.S. right now because of Jimmy Carter. If the, mm-hmm. There's no Jimmy Carter. We'll probably be still in Iran right now, depending we get, on— We're getting pool from every side. Yeah. Our uh, Persian Gulf is belongs to 90% right. It belongs to China. Mm-hmm. Gas and gold is Russia. Obviously, West and East are pulling Iran yeah. apart, and it's not in their benefit that right now supporting people. But also, uh, Shah was dealing with his own. Shah was dealing with his own health also, right? His health was deteriorating towards the end. So it was kind of like the timing of all of it come together. You were gonna say something? No, I was gonna. It, this all reminded me of the, this documentary. documentary HBO. One of the one of the hostages. Are you in it? Is, is, is yes, it? I was. Yeah, no. Uh-huh. <laughs> like thing, wow. she's like, I, and I'm the director yeah. of the documentary. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm the producer. Um, <laughs> so I want to give it a plug. No, yeah. I'm not the producer. Mm-hmm. So but nice. he said something really interesting. Where he said uh, one of the hostages. He had and he had an Iranian wife that was waiting for him back in America. Um, he said that. I'm paraphrasing. He said, we were not the losers of the hostage crisis because we were there for 444 days and it was it was uncomfortable and it was mm-hmm. distressing um, and it was a bad experience. But the real losers of all of this, the real people that suffered were the Iranian people because they became a international pariah. Mm-hmm. And for the last 42 years, when this was shot, it was 42 years. Um, they've had to suffer under this dictatorship, under this theocracy, which is what leads us to... Uh, Masojina Amini. It wasn't just about her. It was just like what happened two years ago with George Floyd. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just about George Floyd. It was a bigger issue of people protesting systemic racism and police brutality. So this was the same thing. She was the representative of the match that lit the fire. That was a match. Yeah. And that was it. And, it's, and if you don't mind, Pat, so uh, I posted a video from my podcast. I got kind of, you know, kind of emotional. It got to where I was just kind of pointing out like the feminists in, in this country, a lot of them complain when they can literally do anything that they want. And I said, this poor girl, her hat was wrong and I beat her to death in the street, which triggered me to think about more things about where are the modern day feminists at here? All the big voices, all those celebrities that jump on anything quick that happens only to Americans from the Amy Schumer's to Alyssa Milano's to Michelle Obama. Where are you guys at? Amy did say something. She said something. She said something. Just one one thing. It was one thing. And and I totally agree with yeah. you by the way. We we're all, you know, I'm I'm very left. I'm a democrat. So mm-hmm. I'm extremely extremely disappointed and distressed with the response from what I guess I would say my party leadership and you're waiting and I'm thankful that AOC came out a couple times. She gave a very detailed breakdown of what happened, but Congresswoman Omar said something the other day that I felt found very problematic as well because it was kind of like the New York Times article where it didn't present the full case. Exactly. So where, where do you think those people, like, where, where are they at? If it's not about a problem here, if it isn't about abortion, your fellow sisters are literally getting beaten to death by the morality police. Yeah. Where are you at? Where's the march? Where's the uprise? Where's the where's the going into the streets? I think somewhere in Canada they had 100, no, I'm sorry, 60,000. Like, 50, it was 60, amazing. Yeah. I don't see it here, and it's like, if it's not about one certain subject, I don't think that they, they really don't care. Saying one thing is, is, is one thing, but I think getting out there and getting in the streets, I know, Paula, you've been doing it. I know, uh, Naz, you've been doing it too. If, but like, if, it's your, if, it's your, um, if it's your rally cry, so for example, my rally cry is capitalism and free enterprise and you know, business and freedom of speech. That's my rally cry. If a topic comes around that, I'm going to talk about it. Like when PayPal came out yesterday, uh, over the weekend, they said, hey, PayPal moving forward, they're going to fine you $2,500 if uh, anybody uh, puts any kind of misinformation out there. I'm like, what, what is these guys put on oh, Twitter? Fake. And then that wasn't fake. That was, was. absolutely no. They nope. just took it, it down. No, they just fake. reversed. I got their, debunked. That's Is not. It not? Nope. No, no, they reversed fake. their role. Yahoo, they reversed. Yahoo, right, yeah. Yahoo came out and Yahoo said Didn't know that. they reversed their position, saying they can't do that. And by the way, if it was fake, PayPal lost six billion dollars today. <laughs> Wow. Oh, did they? Market yeah. value. To, but see, here's what happens. Like Some people are like, yeah, but that was uh, Snopes. It's, that never really happened. This is happening where it's concerning certain people, and people are like, wait a minute, this is what's going on. For When you're saying this feminist stuff, there's a lot of women that this is their rally cry. Yes. Your rally cry is feminist. Your rally cry is women. Your rally cry is that when you're campaigning, and those are the ones that are quiet. That's... that's uh, well, making that's people feel, me. yeah, that's that's you know, a little bit disturbing at? for some people. Yeah. C- question. So, Mortezo, we've seen this many times, though. This isn't like the first time that this has taken place, right? This has been going on for many times. Every time, you know, something like this happens, people are like, oh, it's not going to happen. You know, it's just another, it's going to last a day. It's going to last a week. It's going to last two weeks. It's going to last three weeks. Eventually, it's going to be this. 
What is different with this one than other protests we've had in the past? Here's the difference. Never happened that 25 days, mm-hmm. morning to night, 24 hours, people under age 30 that they did not even born yeah. in the other regime. They born in this regime. Never happened. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you heard that news or not. In Sistan, eight kids got killed. They got shot from the back. And 80 people total in Zahedan. 80, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, they didn't even tell them run or hey to and turn around and they shoot them. They just shot them from the back. These things, we believe when it gets to this point, every one blood brings thousands of bloods up to go fight back. These families, they're not going to stop this time. It's a matter of do or die. We can feel it this time. I, I'm in, in touch with uh, Iran almost every night. Almost every night. We're, yeah. we're talking. We can f- feel the language. You know when, you, when you're always saying, when you look at the eyes, eyes talking? Yeah, of course. I can feel it. When I'm talking to them, I can feel it. This time is different. With the people. For many reasons, it's yeah. different. Many reasons. They have nothing to lose anymore. You got, you got to be scared of the people. They have nothing to lose. That's a good point. Yeah. And more to Zojan, they are also um, uh, banding together to shut down businesses, like mm-hmm. uh, from all sectors. There's uh, oh, oil coming. and gas people it's that coming. were They're protesting striking. today in Abadan. Started today. They're striking, and mm-hmm. um, some students are striking. Uh, Bazaris of uh, Petroshemia started Bazzari, today. Yeah, uh, closing down their so, shops. So I'm reading this book called From Dictatorship to Democracy. I just finished by Gene Sharp. He died four years ago or something like that. Fascinating story, and he breaks down the 187 things you got to do to have a peaceful revolution, to go from a you know dictatorship to a democracy, which theocracy, in other words, it's pretty much a dictatorship they have over there right now. You don't have a voice. You don't have freedom. Anything can be taken away from you. It's a very different kind of an environment. But his argument is this has to be a peaceful revolution, peaceful protesting. It can't be violent. It's like the whole story with MLK versus Malcolm X. Mm. One wanted to do it peaceful. The other one had it to you know go more on the violent uh, uh, direction. Do you think uh, the Iranian people can pull this off peacefully or are they going to need help for someone to support them to, be, to where it's going to get pretty violent? Patrick John, when you get to the point that is starting three days ago, they're taking criminal prisoners out yeah. and give them a weapon. To fight the protesters. Give them a chain to who, fight the protesters. Who's, when they? Who's we they? We filmed them. The government. Regime. government. Yeah, regime. Regime opened the jails, right. criminal jails, people that they killed people. Now they give them promise of lowering their, wow. uh, you know, jail time or off them for the death or whatever and put them in the street. There's also reports of, um, which the regime in Iran has done this before, they bring in forces from Lebanon and surrounding mm-hmm. countries um, because some people say that it's it's easier for them to beat and kill Iranians because it's not their hamvatans, it's not their people, mm-hmm. their country, mm-hmm. women and men. So that's happening too because there's photos circulating of their uniforms. Their videos. And their the videos, videos that they're say, talking Arabic. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. They're saying that uh, you're in my land and you're telling me what I can do in my own country. Yeah. Yeah. Get out of my country. And they're speaking, even the uh, police or whatever, they're not even wearing anything. Some of them are just in uh, casual clothes. But going back to the question, Apollo, going back to the question to all of you and, you know, violent, peaceful protest it is is the method of peaceful protesting. Can that prevail long term? No, you don't think. OK, so tell me why. I just feel like and also for, for a diaspora Iranian to be sitting out here, I can never tell people in Iran what to do because I'm not there. No so question this about isn't it. What, yeah. yeah. So of what course. I'm just saying is when um, because I've seen people inside of Iran say this in a more eloquent, articulate way, but essentially, if you're, if the state is meeting us with repression and violence, that's how we're gonna respond back. And that's what you're seeing. Okay, fine, so how do you do that without weapons? Because over there it's not Second Amendment, it's not like America where they believe in Second Amendment, which by the way, times like this kind of validates, kind of need a gun here and there to protect myself against the government that yep. tries to do this to me. Uh, but uh, how do you do that if you don't have access to guns? And weapons. And that's a major problem because people thinking army would join them one of these days. Mm. Well, guess what? The head of the army are selected from the high generals of Sepai Pastoran. They mm-hmm. put him on the top of the army. We heard last week there are five of each group, higher ended uh, rank. They got the, uh, basically assassinated because they were thinking or talking with each other for something like that. Yeah. Mm. Here's the point. Right now, people... 
they're hoping that they get the lower rank this side. And if you see, stone and rock is against the tear gas and bullet. People is who? The people, like the we the people, not yes. the government. Are sure. hoping okay. that police forces come to their side. Uh, hoping that police forces come to their side. Which I believe is one thing that a lot of people say outside of your own inside, that that's what they need. Absolutely. And by the way, you know what this book said? The book said when large institutions, unions, organizations turn against the government, that's when they start losing. So yes. it's not just the people. So it's like when you're talking about businesses, yes. oil, yes. things like that, that's kind of the direction it needs to go to for some of that to be taking place. But you're saying there's... Regardless of what happens, it's going to go through violence. It's not going to have a. It's not going to be successful as a peaceful pro- protest. Way past it. So let me Way ask you: Was the '79 one a peaceful protest when they got the shot, or was it was it violent? It was peaceful. So maybe peaceful could work because being too violent. It worked, also, it worked against the Shah. Patrick John, this regime is, is the dirtier than the Shah. It's the worst regime in the history. Right. You don't find any king, any dictator. Did what they did to the country and to the people. You know what's crazy? You know, so I was on the show with uh, Fardot Farahzad, mm-hmm. good-looking guy. I don't know if you guys. He's oh, very from Iran International. Yeah. From Iran Iran. International. So he had me on last week, and we're talking, and he asked me the weirdest question because I did a video about Iran like a couple of years ago, U.S. Iran history of conflict, and he said, you know, in your timeline, and again, I'm paraphrasing because he asked it in Farsi, and there was a translator. I speak Farsi, but I don't speak it fluently to speak on the channel uh, in Farsi. So he says. You said that when Iran needs help and for whatever reason, Democrats don't help uh, uh, Iran to have a democracy, Republicans do. And I said- uh, We're not saying history says. I'm just saying case study. The closest thing to Joe Biden ever is Jimmy Carter. And the closest thing to Jimmy Carter ever is Joe Biden. Did you hear Michelle Obama or Oprah say anything about this is happening in Iran? I'm specifically talking Carter Biden. I'm specifically talking Carter Biden, right? Because, uh, you know- uh, on the outside, Carter was sold as a what? Carter, everyone who knows Carter says good things about Carter as a person. Left, right, middle, doesn't matter. As a human being. Pacifist. Yeah, but when you talk about as a leader, this guy was not a leader, decision maker. He wasn't. He was just a very good Christian family man. You know, just the kind of a guy that's, a, you know, if you're going to be like a man, be like this person, he's a good man, right? But when it comes down to decisions like this, he didn't make the decisions that he needed to make. Kissinger himself, they could have helped. They didn't get involved, right? And then you have Biden, Biden being where he's at right now. And, you know, they're, they have a bunch of other sets of issues that they're dealing with. Focus is more on Ukraine, less on Iran. You know, uh, Ukraine's the main focus right now because of Russia, all that stuff. Hey, 50 billion here, 60 billion here. And then Biden agreed to give another $7 billion, I believe, last week where the conversation's taking place. And now everyone's saying, well, the whole thing's going to change when they get back to the JCPOA negotiation to get a nuclear because we have to give them what they want so this thing can kind of go away, which is... I don't understand that argument to take the position of let's give them what they want so the regime's going to be happier and calmer, right? What are your thoughts when you're hearing this of U.S. not being as involved to help the people where maybe in other times they got a little bit more help than they're getting right now? You're talking about Iran, right? Yeah, I'm talking about like because, you know, for them to do what they want to do, they're going to need some sort of a help. Outside help. The people are, not the government. So there's a big difference. Like, for example— if we're talking, uh, if we're talking uh, uh, Armenia against Azerbaijan, mm-hmm. okay, the the Armenian people and the government, the Armenian people are not revolting against him. They're on the same page. They need help. Mm-hmm. Here's money. Ukraine is like, dude, we're on the same page. We need help. They're attacking us, right? But Iranian people, their government is hurting them. So a regime has to come in and help so. the people out, and it's not happening. Why is Iran not helping out? Patrick John, United States sold over trillion dollars after brought Khomeini to Iran. It's not in their... You said they sold? They sold trillion dollars of arm in last 43 years to the yeah. Middle Eastern area because of their making one country scary. Hey, you got to buy this against them. Hey, you got to buy this weapon against... That's what is happening. Iran, I mean, with Khomeini come to Iran, seven war happened. 48 million refugees, one and a half a million killed, over 3 million disabled. This is a gift of one mistake. United States foreign policy should change, must change. Enough already making Al-Qaeda support Al-Qaeda, give him so much money, and then they they, they go against them. Enough making 
uh, Boko Haram or, or whatever, all those uh, ISIS and all of them, and then later on turning against to become a terrorist of the uh, uh, area. If you're going back and you see what these things happening is a mistake of foreign policy of the United States. Yep. And But there are a lot of Iranians. Sorry to cut you off. No, no, no. You're there are a lot of Iranians that also I hear from that don't want foreign intervention because a lot of people do see the reason we're even here is because of foreign intervention partially. So there is that argument too that that it has to come from within. How it's going to come from within, I also don't have the answer but, but for that. The, but there's a difference because, uh, and here's how I see the foreign uh, intervention. The the difference between there's another documentary that uh, 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 why uh, the revolution of Iran happened, talking about what they did to the Shah because Shah was becoming too powerful. For example, if if you're living in a society where The, the people at the top are abusing people, okay? Say you and I are here, we go to a restaurant, okay? We see a guy that's hitting a girl, mm -hmm. slaps her in the face. Mm -hmm. What are you going to tell me to do? I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to go intervene. That's right. Yeah. So, you, it's, so but, but should we inter intervene? I would. But should we? Yes. So we should. Yes. You but just answer, but, yes, but, but, that's, but wait a minute. to me, that's different. But no, it's not. It's not different because in this situation, 12-year-olds are getting killed. Yeah. Okay, so it's not like with the Shah, Shah was killing 12-year-olds. It's not like the Shah was forcing 52-year-olds to marry a nine-year-old. It's a very different perspective. Question so, for you then. But let me wrap this oh, point sorry. up. So for me, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a situation like this, these are two different situations. If my, my sister is married to her husband, mm -hmm. they're having a fight. It's mm -hmm. not my business. I'm not intervening. Mm -hmm. Zero. If my wife and I are having a fight, my dad lives with my, my dad's biggest reason why he didn't want to live with us for 10 years. I've been trying to get this guy to live with us. You know what's his number one reason? Mm -hmm. I don't want to come in between you and your wife. Mm -hmm. Never. Mm -hmm. Like if we fight, guess what my dad does? Goes upstairs. Leaves. He yeah. goes to his room. <laughs> yeah. He says, it's your business. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He goes, it's your business. No problem. But I tell you, if I even, it's never happened. It's not. But if, if I did something, mm -hmm. he's the first one that's going to come in and say, I'm intervening. Right. So I think. You know, as much as you say some Iranians are saying that, I understand it's like the diplomatic, politically correct thing to say for some, not saying all of them. Some of them want to say something like that. This is a very different situation they're currently in right now. Well, I'm not talking about diaspora Iranians saying this. I'm talking about Iranians inside of Iran. But my question to you was, if you, you are saying they need intervention, so how do you propose that? To happen what can even happen how can I, you get and i think we gotta we, the united states has to be the number one to, to step up they got to put sanction i know we always do sanctions on russia and everybody we got to get hands on because like you said yeah. if it's going to be rocks against bullets they're not gonna i, I love them to death and I'm, i'm with them 100 you're not going to win that battle and I, i don't know here's my question you guys why aren't we getting as involved with not like like Ukraine and all this why are we because they're trying to uh, negotiate the JCPOA so that's what I was going to yeah that's, that's I mean that's the main thing. my that's how, what I would think is yeah. happening so do you have an answer that you guys have an answer because I have a rebuttal here okay so let me let me give my feedback to you on how to help on something like that and I, I know it's not going to be a popular one for you because of where you lean politically but mm -hmm. I'll give it to you so you know sometimes uh, um, um, Paulette for instance I was the annoying younger brother Super protective, mm -hmm. okay? I'm exactly who you think I was. So when my sister would date guys, uh, he, you know, it was just a bad situation. She did not want me around, right? Because my parents got a divorce. So naturally, from 10 years old, when they got a divorce, I was the brother. I, was I have to play that role, naturally. No problem. So when, when you have somebody annoying like that in your life, you don't want them around too much mm -hmm. because it's like, man, let me just live my life and just don't bother me, right? Until all of a sudden something happens where there's really a need, then you say, you know what? This is a situation where I wish that brother of mine that was like that would be here to protect me against X, Y, Z. Is that 90% of the time? No, it's 10% of the time. When uh, uh, Trump was president, okay, he put sanctions on top of sanctions, 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 to the point where Iran was about to go through the revolution. It was very close, where we got about to go through the revolution. And he says, no, we support the Iranian people. No, we support the Iranian people. He pulled out of the $150 billion with Kerry and Obama. Hmm. He said, no, we're not going to be doing this. Pulled out, pulled out, pulled out. We're not going to be doing this. We're not going to be doing this. We're not going to be doing this. And then the moment the regime changes, no, this is back on the table. Let's talk about it. 
we're removing this, we're removing that, and then they start getting free. I was in Monaco one time, and we're having, can't even mention the person's name, but the person is involved in the economy of the 21 countries that they're dealing with, the economy and all this stuff. He says, listen, the moment sanctions were given, we had to call every bank in the Middle East to say, you can't do any business with people in Iran. He says it was legit when that took place. Like when you're saying business is shutting down, oil shutting down, you got to bring the pain to the government, right? Unfortunately, the current regime can do that, but they're not doing that. And they're playing negotiation. There's a famous guy back in the day, his name was Ronald. He says, you don't negotiate with terrorists. We've been negotiating with terrorists for too long. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you should negotiate with terrorists. A lot of people agree with you. Yeah. And there's uh, messages that we get from inside of Iran that say, we know things are bad. And yeah, the economy sucks, but we want you guys to put pressure on your politicians to not renegotiate this deal. We will suffer a little longer. And they say, a lot of people right. in Iran not, say, we don't want help. We just, we just want your right. support. Because not even a dollar of it come to Iran. Right, To exactly. the people. Yep. That goes directly from the account to account to the terrorists outside the countries. Yep. And the funny thing is, none of those countries said one one thing about what is happening in Iran, neither Syria or Palestine, yeah, that's, Palestine or none of them. No, that's what I was going to ask you, Murtaza, who, who, who in that area besides us, because it's always us, we're the world's police, but like like you said, there's you know conflict of interest right now. Who else can step in and, and help? I mean, if there's, you know, who, is it always going to be just us? Nobody else is trying, like you just said. When you say oh, us, do you mean America? America. Oh, we're, okay. we're, we, I mean, yeah, normally yeah. we help with right. everything we're our, our hand is everywhere mm -hmm. 160 whatever countries we have bases everywhere nobody else nobody has a base here we're spread out who else in that area could try to help like nobody's nobody stepping up they didn't leave any friends around they no. just supported all the terrorist groups in each country the government of every single country around us are the enemy of us yeah well, i mean think about it two times the uh, trucks 18 trucks of gold and dollars that were going illegally to Turkish to come out and go to any of their private banks. Yeah. Turkish got it. <laughs> Nobody said this is ours. It was few hundred billion dollars with the golds and uh, dollars. They're like, fantastic. We have a budget for a few years of our country. Nobody claimed it. Wow. This is crazy that like how many trillions of dollars they stole out of that country and still that country is standing. Imagine what a rich country it was. Yeah. Well, an analyst also had speculated to me that, um, you know, other countries in the region aren't going to come out strongly in support of the Iranian people and their fight for freedom because then they'll get worried that, oh, this could happen in our country, too. Yeah, and the people it's, in our it's country about are to happen in yeah. Iraq, right? Yeah, yeah. they're going to want a revolution, in Iraq, too. Yeah. So. so, OK, so let's just say the revolution does happen. OK, let's just say this is a different one and it's going to actually take kind place. OK, who's running the place what's the form of the government who steps up you know who are uh some names you you know for the longest time you know many of the uh, iranians who love the shah they're like you know his son is going to go back and farah and reza Pahlavi, and they're going to go back and you know that's what's going to happen you're hearing a news you know soccer player legendary soccer player ali karimi you know going around saying what he's saying because typically when you do have a, a revolution a british diplomat wrote a book like 20 years 15 years ago called leaderless revolution Who's the leader today? Right. It's a leaderless revolution, right? It's like the prime example of there's a revolution taking place without a leader. What's going to happen if this revolution does take place? This is the biggest characteristics that this event has it right now. Which it, is what? It's literally there is an event going on 25 days in a country with no exact or no person as a leading it. And here's the problem with, in my opinion, from the outside the country leaders or mm -hmm. even inside the country. Yeah. Imagine a one-way one line bridge, and you're parking at the middle of it. You're not backing up that people go, and you're not going forward that people go. Some of our leaders are standing at the middle of the bridge, and they're not letting people. One day they are king, one day they are not king. One day they want to become leader, one day they don't want. One day they're a resident. They announced that I'm a, just a resident. This thing is not We can't count on the people that there are on outside the country. I believe the next future leader of the country would be a prop, possibly a lady from the street of terror. You think so? I Look think at so. what the girls are doing That's right amazing. Now. Look at what the teenage girls, That's they're leading the charge right now. That you would be a fast Oh my God, that'd be great. Seeing that'd them be, in the street and you know. Yeah. I mean, but, but, but 
are you know how uh, uh, when there's a crisis, leaders rise up and you kind of identify certain names like, hey, you look at what happened here. Boom. Who's this person? Never knew this person. Overnight, we know the person. Are there some names that are being, you know, identified who are getting their voices to get louder and louder? I haven't heard any. Haven't and also either. it's I would say even if I had, it's dangerous to say it because you, you're just giving something away. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, but, well, but then we're going to go after know, this person. I'm, I understand not. No, but what name, you but, say right. when you said Ali Karimi, right. I think people half joke and half think, well, he'd be great if he could come back right. and do that. Right. Um, no, but I have also heard people say just this is not anything formal. This is just like, oh, this would be cool if this happened. But there's a human rights lawyer that famously has never left the country and they jail her all the time for defending human rights, Nasreen Sutudeh, and you said a female. Mm -hmm. um, people have been like, well, she'd be great if, you know, she could lead the charge. You think Iran, out of all the countries, is ready to have an, a, a woman as a president? Well, not in the lead? current government. No, 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 no. of yeah. course. I'm yeah, saying yeah. once the revolution happens, you yeah. think it's capable to do that? And if you do, uh, when Khomeini came in, he killed 2,000 of Shah's generals and military leaders. What do you do if you do take over? Hezbollahs are still there. Morality police people are still there. What do you do? Them jail them like a hundred thousand people are gonna go to jail? I mean, that's a because those, if they're still out there, they're gonna do what their job is to do. Are they gonna escape and go to, you know, where are they gonna go to? What do you do with those folks? Well, the Imperial Army, when Shaw left, a lot of them just switched over. They're like, okay, well, I guess you're well, in not charge a lot now. Of them. No, no, he killed a lot of them. He killed like a couple thousand of them, and a lot of them escaped. Top, top ones. Yeah, he, he, he they top, got top ones. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, those are the main ones you got to figure out because you, you need your lieutenants, you need your generals. But uh, what happens with that? What do you do with that? Do you, what happens with the Hezbollah laws? What happens with these, you know, these people? You know, history shows during the Mossadegh time and uh, even a couple of times after that, that these people, they have a fantastic talent of over the night changing face. <laughs> Uh, well, we saw that uh, at 11.40 a.m., people were in the street, death to Shah, uh, Zendabad Mossadegh. The, the 20, uh, two months passed between the people saying, people said this, the opposite things 20 minutes later when that happened. What do you mean by that? So you're saying they <coughs> have to change their minds is what you're saying? Many people. Look at our celebrities. Look at our celebrities in past months. I have a Farsi page past as, as, as soon as I came out of the country mm -hmm. on Facebook, I contact many celebrities that about this matter, you want to say something? About this matter, you want to say something? Nothing, nothing. Now, last 15, 20 days, mm -hmm. they feel like, oh, it looks like this is serious. Yeah. They start saying something. And some of them still, they're not clearing their position. Yeah. Exactly. They're just saying something between this pay and that way that I don't, I don't say that uh, taking a side. Mm -hmm. To be Look, fair, they're getting It's fired. not a time to say uh, I'm Paris police or I'm Taji. I'm, uh, you know. A soccer team. Uh, soccer teams, uh, which side. It's a matter right now. You have Sharaf or you're B Sharaf. Yeah. That's right. it. Right. That's it. And they threaten. Sharaf, B Sharaf. Can you explain what Sharaf? No, I can't. <laughs> it's just having, having shame. Wise and. Having and, shame. Yeah. Shame. So if you are B Sharaf, you have no shame. No shame. Yeah. Yeah. No shame. Sh shame or you don't shame. And the artists do get threatened and their families get threatened. And I know they've taken people's passports away so they can't leave the country. So mm -hmm. we, yes, it would be, and a lot of them have spoken out and then they get threatened. And so it's like they try to do it and they can't go past a certain point because of what's being told that will happen to them and their families. So, yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, Shervin Hajipur uh, just made a song with everybody's tweets. I don't know if you heard that. Of course. And so they caught him. They captured him. And then his video came out, uh, I guess, yesterday. And in his video, he just wanted to let everyone know that I'm okay. Nothing's happened. It was a misunderstanding uh, that they thought perhaps I'm with the uh, uh, other governments outside of Iran. But, you know, it's not. And instead of giving me money, a lot of Iranians are supporting my music and you're sending me money. Send the fa funds to Mahak. Yeah. Mahak. Mm. And at the end, I'm okay. I'm not taking any podcast. I'm not at this point at all. And you could see that it's scripted. So the Iranian way government lobby. Same thing that yeah, happened in yeah. China with Jack Ma when Jack exactly. Ma went disappearing for three months. Yeah. yeah. 
So when you ask, and by the way, the song "Riven," oh, first time. So by the way, the, the first Beautiful. time I heard it, I'm like, "Oh my god!" I had the Chill. kids listen to it. It's unbelievable. But go ahead. You were saying. So when you're thinking, when you're saying, "How come we're not helping Iran?" Right? Think about Iran, Russia, China. Mm -hmm. Right? They're all working together. So if you have one country that has mess, then what happens? Your power. It's all power play. Who we can help and who we can't play, help. And by the way, if America wants to help Iran, who's the, who's going to get the money? The government? That's not going to help the people. Yeah, exactly. That's not going to help. So who's the person? There is no person. So it's just it's just a movement, and you can't just give give yeah. money. To and a these movement. these take time too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so maybe something will emerge mm -hmm. I, I in the to coming God for them. weeks and months. Me too. Because it's not letting down, and like we said, the the. When you have schoolgirls that are this defiant in the face of authority and they don't care and they're out in the streets getting murdered and beaten and going in the faces of police and any authority figure taking off their hijabs, yeah. you know, that this is like there's no turning back from this. And like Morten Zajan said, they feel like they, there's nothing to lose. We literally live under the worst oppression. So what worse could happen? Yep. So one of their chant is that until our last blood were not given up on this movement. That's their, like, I don't say it exactly how they say it right. in Farsi. They have nothing to lose. Yeah. Nothing. That's where they are. Nobody, you can't find anybody does what they did to our country in 43 years in a history of human being. You can't find it. I was with you in Irvine. You guys were doing protesting. Yeah. You were in L.A. the day before. How big are these protests getting in L.A. and Irvine? Uh, it's getting bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger. Yesterday, uh, Sunday, we had the event at the uh, Mission Viejo. It's a little city. Somewhere around three, 4,000 people were there. Oh, in wow. Mission Viejo. Yeah, in Mission wow. Viejo. Our event in LA was a little over 20,000. Oh, wow. Because I was, I was helping uh, and with then the LA the, That afternoon, we drove the, to LA. In the streets. Yeah, we were, uh, started uh, downtown <laughs> at uh, City Hall and um, marched. And it was, I mean, you can see there's aerial shots and... 151 cities participated in this. Got and mm -hmm. I should point out, it was started by Hamid Ismailion, who lost his daughter and um, wife in the Canada. Flight 752, which was <laughs> shot down by the IRGC. And he started this movement. And it's because of him that we had the Global Day of Action for Iran and 151 cities. I mean, that's a lot of global support. You know, I, I hope this is the one area where, you know, everybody, doesn't matter which side you're on politically, everybody unites to say, look, man, I don't care which one you voted for or not. If there's one thing we agree on, I'd love to see democracy get back into Iran where we can be uh, free and go back and visit a place like this. It seems like if there's one thing, hopefully, people can stay unified on, mm -hmm. it seemed like so far it's looking good to do something with this. Freedom for Iran. Well, we're going to see what's going to happen. With the, by the way. So just out of curiosity, this is a topic that comes up all the time. I've spent time with Reza Pahlavi a couple times, the son, in D.C. We've had a meeting together. We sat down. We talked about his father. We did a Zoom a couple years ago, and we've spoken. Hey, you should have him on. You should have him on. You should have him on. And he's out there, very you know, eloquent, great speaker, does a very uh, good job. But the, the audience is 50-50. If you look at his social media, it gets a lot of people, gets a lot of commentary. He gets a lot of people that still – follow him, you know, uh, uh, very loyal to his messaging. But what what is the perspective of Reza Pahlavi's, you know, his son, RP? Uh, how do the Persian Iranian people view him? Any one of you guys can take this one if you're... Well, I live in L.A., okay. so uh, L.A. leans toward uh, more monarchists, but there's also a lot of people like me who aren't aligned or affiliated with any group ideology or person. We just want freedom for Iran. And I know um, some some of the people in his camp have said, look, he just would like to be a part of the democracy and in an election. Mm -hmm. And if they vote for him, great. And if they don't, it'll be somebody else. So there's kind of different camps and there is definitely split support. That's what I've seen. Oh, well, where is he? Yeah, I agree. Uh, when uh, last couple of times he cleared his vision about, you know what, I want to be a citizen. And if people wanted me to run the country, no problem. Uh, then you guys selected, right? This made the, so much clarity for people that were thinking like only King, only Reza, only Reza Shah is coming. This, this way, now people know that we talk about absolute democracy. Absolute democracy. When regime change, Everybody vote on what they want to do. 
I don't know. You guys I are think, all being very diplomatic. Here. I think. Let's see I think. Gonna... <laughs> I think it's more fifty-fifty because I don't know if the younger people feel he can relate to their pain because he's lived in America and and you know I think the generation that knows his father more they're probably saying oh we would like yeah. that back but the younger generation I don't know. I'm not hundred percent. I would agree with that as well. You don't know if the younger generation, which is mm -hmm. very valid, on why that would be the case. Well, listen to their chance too. The younger generation is just saying, "Zanzendigiozadi, freedom, death to the dictator, death to mm -hmm. the regime. Don't be scared. We're all together." So that I just feel like if we listen to their chance, we can hear what they want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Freedom, secularism, secular democracy. But there's not one person's name. So some people say it in Iran, but yeah. the majority are not saying one person's name. It's kind of like, for example, we moved fo to Florida, right? And I was having a conversation with Sia and then we, we talk about California, how we miss California, but we miss California um, post COVID because that's the California we know. California is different for us now because we're so used to Florida. Yeah. Are you kidding me? And I feel like, for example, the older generation remembers how Iran was with Shah and Pahlavi, all of that. And they're hoping that comes mm. back. But is there a connection with the youth? Is he making, is RP making connection with the youth? Or whenever there is uprise, that's when he shows up. That's the whole question. Got it. So, you know, some view as an opportunist, hey, come out here, say a few things. Some say, no, we want him here because we'd like to go back and see what Iran once used to be. The chance of Iran going back to a monarchy is slim to none. It's not, it's not going to be a monarch. The only thing that's going to happen is, a, again, my opinion. I'm just talking from my perspective here on what I'm saying. Uh, uh, democracy is the only, uh, uh, in order for him to take it back to monarchy, I feel you can't be disconnected for 43, that's a long time mm -hmm. for it to happen again. So, again, no one knows. You, you'll see what happens. If it comes down to the election, that's who they want. It is what it is. If it doesn't, it won't happen. I think John, people experienced 1,400 years ago Islam. Oh, yeah. That's enough for them. Hmm. They don't want to go experience 250 years ago monarchy yeah. again. It's time for democracy and freedom. For but uh, what does democracy look like? I what hope is we it? find out. How do you live here? No, I understand. But think about 44 years of oppression. How do you gradually do that? Right. How, how, how what does it, it look like? And how long does it take? Because it's no, not going to happen overnight. Oh, think about it. Of course it's not going to happen not. overnight. Of course it's not going to so happen overnight. It's going to take a while. Yeah. But it is possible because it's different type of movement this time than the green green movement. And green movement, I feel like I actually was in Iran when that happened. I got to Iran two days before the election mm -hmm. with Ahmadinejad and Musavi, and it was when I when we landed, we, we were out of the airport in Tehran at two a.m. and we're driving through the streets, and everybody's out dancing. There's green everywhere because that was the color of the movement. Music, and I was like so shocked. I asked my family, I was like, "This is happening here? This is legal right now?" And they're like, "Well, yeah, it's before the election, so they want mm -hmm. everybody to feel this energy." And everybody really felt energized. And then we all saw what happened. It was a rig rigged election, obviously, and yeah. went to Ahmadinejad. But those, and I was there for the couple weeks after, so I saw what happened. But it did kind of get quashed pretty quickly. This one has sustained and it's showing no signs of slowing down, especially because we're talking about different sectors of uh, businesses now joining together um, to protest. So that's one big difference. Uh, another one is like how young the people are that are engaged and moving this forward to like teenagers were saying, you know? I just haven't seen it be this sustained because we've had protests happen. Aubon happened. That was the November, bloody November yeah. in 2019. 1,500 people that we know of were killed. Um, and then that, because the internet got throttled and cut off and the world wasn't paying the attention it is now, that also got quelled really easily. And this one is not. This one's growing more. Let me let me ask you. You guys remember, you know, uh, what's that one song? We Are the World, you know, yeah. the whole yeah. uh, USA for Africa, US for yeah. Africa, the song. Uh, it, it, if somebody does want to, you know, do an event like that to raise money, who does the money go to? Who do you trust to send the money to? Are there any organizations that, you know, you can support? Are there ones that people trust that is actually going to make it in there? You know, sometimes the biggest criticism has been the money never makes it to the real people 
the ones in the middle keep most of the money, so be careful who you give your money to. Yeah, the center of human rights in Iran. That's all. Yes. I swear to God, I was going to ask you, if we're sending that money, where who's going to get it? Does it go directly to them, or is the government involved? Uh, there's a couple that came out. Um, I wish I had my phone with me, but... Um, I can find the link. But there are a couple like Iran Human Rights, Center for Human Rights, yeah. and they use the money to, I believe what it says is to actually just help promote some freedoms and democracy for Iran. And they work on, um, like, I don't want to misspeak for them, but they use it, it. It's not going, you can't just send money to Iran anyway. Yeah, exactly. And there's certain ways that you can get money to uh, charity organizations and stuff. There's also an Amnesty International petition that's going around. Yeah. I know one of the human rights attorneys um, that's a part of the effort that people are trying to get signed so that it puts pressure on the UN and the international community to uh, create an international mechanism to investigate crimes against humanity from these officials and uh, to go after their assets in other countries, that's especially right. where their kids live. So they're trying to get them to not be able to travel, to have you know, them and their kids not be able to have property freeze their money and that's one way to get to them and try them for crimes it's one way to get to who to the uh officials of iran who are in charge of you know giving these orders it's basically like a way to uh sanction them to freeze their assets to allow them not to travel freely to like u.s canada europe yeah um okay paula did you guys know one or no like uh, where the money goes to because sometimes like like right now they for example i'm having a what's that again they should say it somewhere that's, on there. That's the one of Iran. Yeah. yeah, that's it. We got some people, but uh, they cannot accept big money. Mm -hmm. they're, they're gonna get in danger. Of course. So we uh, passed three weeks. We got some channels that we sent little by little, 5,000, 10,000, 5,000. No, that's not, that's and, not. And yeah, and mostly goes for the doctors and you know, people that they are uh, giving help. Mm -hmm. They spending for the medical uh, stuff for the people that get shot and so on and so on, they're underground. What do, you, what do you guys think about Christina, uh, Christiane uh, Amanpour? What do you guys think about her with CNN? She hasn't, has she even said anything about this? Yeah, what do you think about she's her in done, general? Has she talked a lot about of this? Interviews. Well, you know, yeah. the whole thing, she was supposed to do an interview with Raisi, and then, uh, uh, you know, he said, uh, you have to wear the hijab, and she said, I've done interviews for the last God knows how many years, 20-some years, 30 years, I've never worn the hijab. She says, no, I'm not showing up to the interview. If you don't wear the hijab, wow. and she doesn't, there's a picture of her, if you want to put it up with her, not wearing the hijab with an empty chair. It's uh, mm -hmm. the empty chair picture. I don't know if you have that or not. Type an empty chair. Uh, yeah, Raisi is fun. R. R. Mm. R. A. There it oh, is. It's, right, it's there. right there to the right. Yeah. There you go. That's the picture right there. And he doesn't wow. show up. Wow. But then she does this. Then a couple of days later, she tweets and says, you know, retweets the article about New York Times. And I think she pins it to the top. Then she unpinned it oh. about the fact that the issues taking place in Iran is economy. It's not really. You know, what's going on with women and hijab and all this. It's more of an economical issue that's going on. Why, why is it? So here's an, uh, by the way, I don't know if you guys know or not. So for some of you guys that just joined us, we have somebody on the panel right now that minored in media, media criticism. If, if you guys are familiar with that, there's a minor called media criticism. And we're going to go to see if she can criticize some of the media or not. So for the expert on the panel that's a media <laughs> criticism <Yeah>. minor. <laughs> CNN protests yeah. on Sunset. Yeah. Why, yeah, why, why do you think? <laughs> Why is it CNN, New York Times, why is it that some of these stories, like you're just tell the story on what's going on rather than playing politics with some of this stuff? What is their biggest hesitation to say Russia, Putin is Hitler, but in Iran? Nah, it's not really as bad. It's really only economical, but, but Putin is Hitler. Second coming of, you know, Hitler is going to be. Why do they, why do they turn people like him into such, you know, uh, uh, you know, terrible leader, Ukraine heroes. But Iran is more economical situation that's gone. Why do you think they're doing that? Why are they playing politics? Um, I can't speak to Putin, but um, CNN has stepped up their coverage in the last week. I've seen Jake Tapper covers it almost nightly, and they are showing the videos. They were one of the first people, that I think, that showed what was happening at Shadif University and uh, the violence that was, and the crackdown that was happening on the students. So I will say they have stepped up. Christiana Mampour just interviewed um, Shirin Ebadi, who is the first female in the Middle East to win a Nobel Peace Prize, and did a, you know, her basic um, ending message was, she asked Miss Ebadi, what do you think should happen? Uh, she said, yeah, it has to be regime change. So they're saying it, and they're showing it now. Other networks need to follow suit. I 
didn't find, I know some people found this problematic. I felt like she was making a statement. and On this? Yeah. No, I love that she did this. Oh, okay. Oh, I no, thought no, you didn't no, like no, it. No, no, no. Oh, I yeah. salute. I'm yeah, like, yeah, well, this was great. Of course because this Because the visual great. was no, perfect. Absolutely. I, yeah, yeah. I want her to do more of this. Yeah. Show this. Like, hey, why should women, you know, the whole concept about if you don't wear a hijab, it's like a woman walking around naked. That's, the, uh, that's what Khomeini said in 79, that... A woman not wearing a hijab is the same as a woman walking around naked. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and for some people to say, well, that's that's the norm here. We believe mm. that. No, but this I, was I, like the, I like the stand she took with this one. And this was right right in the thick of, I Absolutely. think it was just a few days after Masa Gina died. And so she was like, of course. And, and they're on American soil. So it's different. If she was in Iran, I'm sure she would have put it on. because oh, for sure. Oh, she said that. Yeah, yeah. She, she said, she's like, I'm not doing it in America. Not in American yeah, soil. Yeah. But she, that's the, you, you're in our country. Why am I supposed to wear the, totally. the laws are here on my side? Uh, Patty John, I have nothing uh, against uh, Christian Amanpour. She was born in our street. We were like neighbor. But generally and originally, if you ask majority of the Persian people, they see the origin of the Shia branch of Islam mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just created by UK. The, there's a history on it, exactly how they send it, how they designed it, how... Uh, uh, those majlises showed up, uh, Ayatollah, Ayatollah, above and above, and the, 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 they just trained to speak for us. Everybody knows about the uh, role that UK played behind the Shia. So Persian people originally don't have a good opinion about the CNN, especially what happened in the first 79. You think that? The, yeah. Most Persians to me are Democrats. Most Persians are CNN driven. Most uh, Persians it's pretty me, split these days. I think it's 60-40 is for my feeling. I mean, when I was in L.A. Have you seen the last week protest right in front of the CNN building in Sunset Boulevard? I, I did. Oh, wow. I, 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 5,000 people there. Yeah, but I, but I think for the most part, most Iranians... 60 i'll go 60 40 most of them are democrats Democrat. so i would i would assume that's like their we lean media. liberal in They're, the states but why do they though why do iranians lean liberal in the states what's the, i don't what's know the, I, do. I don't I'd know be curious to know but is it have, does it have anything to do with iran or is it more to do just pure philosophy i lean not lean i am because of domestic policies in the united states so i believe in i'm pro-choice i'm lgbtq rights i'm black lives matter so that's me Internationally, with Iran, I think the Democrats have screwed up the response. Not everybody is unified right. in what they're saying against Iran, so I'm disappointed in that. But yeah, I mean, most of us are Democrats, of course, because of we live in America, so that's what we want for this country. When it comes to Iran, I can see why there are. I I have I know people that socially are liberal in the U.S., but they have voted Republican because of the Republicans' harder stance toward Iran. Did you hear about what happened with Black Lives Matter just in the last couple of weeks? With the owner, the funds. Yeah. yeah, I did hear some stories. What do you think about that? Um, which one are you speaking about in specific? <laughs> I just want to make sure. I can give you all of them. About. So yeah. one, a bunch of them. the uh, the founder got indicted. Uh, two, Kanye coming out talking about White Lives Matter. Kanye, I just can't with him right now. <laughs> three, three. Uh, Osborne, what's uh, what's Sharon, the, Osborne. Yeah. Sharon Osborne? Sharon Osborne, nine hundred thousand, nine hundred thousand. Interviewing her, and she says, "Look, I wish Kanye would have told me Black Lives Matter was a scam. We gave him nine hundred thousand dollars, you know." So, so what happens here is the following: You're an educated person. You went to a great university. You speak eloquently. You're somebody that's you know, and and a lot of us, you know, in in you know, you're hearing like, okay, Black Lives Matter, basic concept. Of course, it matters. Yeah. White lives matter. Of course it matters. Uh, All lives matter. Uh, of course it matters. That's, but that well, wasn't the point of Black Lives Matter. Well, 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 no, no, no. The, mm. the saying, listen, saying but, but Black I'm Lives Matter. I'm also yeah. not talking about an organization right now. I'm talking well, about a movement. Well, the movement, but, but well, the leaders behind the movement, the, we get the, the organization yeah. has just been corrupt and they're not helping any black lives in the community. They're just taking all the money and spending it on themselves. Uh, Candace Owens just did a thing where they raised $80 million. What is it? What's it helping? What are they... What are they helping yeah, in the but, community? But here's the biggest part. Here's the biggest part. Here's the biggest part where credibility is lost. My opinion. Break this apart when I give this to you, okay? What is the job of MSNBC or CNN or Fox or CBS or these guys that are investigative journalists, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. How long does it take to find out it's a shit show within a organization? It's your job to do that. But if you don't do that blindly, 
you just go out there and say, yeah, here's what it is, here's what, and then this happens. You know what happens? You lose credibility. People don't trust the media when you say stuff. And CNN's rating is in such shambles right now that they had to fire the guy, fire a bunch of their hosts. They don't know what the hell to do. Brian Williams, that was maybe their best guy that they had, he's, he decided to step away. He cannot even believe what's going on. I was a Cuomo guy. I thought Cuomo was doing a... Uh, decent job. Take his brother out and any of the Me Too, I don't the credibility behind some of the Me Too movement with him. Take that. I'm not talking about that. I thought he was okay. But you well, realize see, what they what they did was so, so bad that they had to dramatically change it because educated people who went to school followed their truth. And then now it's like, well, we never... Re- You know, the Russia was a hoax, but let's not talk about it because of Durham. You know, we know that was a hoax and it was funded by Hillary. Let's not talk about it. Hunter's laptop. Let's let's not talk about Hunter's laptop. Let's talk about it two days afterwards, election. No, no, let's not talk. There is no investigation. So credibility is gone because they never talk about it. What do you mean they did bad stuff? You said they did so many bad. What did, what did you what are you referring to? With CNN. You said CNN did so many bad things. Everything I just listed to you. Well, I mean, if we're going to talk about networks, Fox News does the same thing. It's just on the other side. So, but then here's what I would say to you. Here's what I would say to you. Say you're right. Let's say let's say you're right. Yeah. Would you say you're right about CNN too or no? About that they've engaged in what? Are you, misinformation. What, what? Misinformation bias. Are you just hit him? They're not like, reporting the news. Yeah. They're holding back news. You to help so, political. So 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 sure, wait. I'm sure there's a bias because they're left leaning. No no, it's not about bias. So here's the thing. So how do you judge a a uh, I don't know? How do you judge a company that's going through problems? How do you judge a company that's how, going to how, how do you how do you judge a how do you judge a bad restaurant? Food, trash. food and service. What else? I would just food. If, if, if I if I say guys, let's go to this restaurant. Yeah. And lunchtime we go to this restaurant. What's the first way to judge at twelve o'clock that this restaurant may have a problem? If it's packed or empty. If it's packed and people say it sucks, do you believe it? No. No. Let me ask the question one more time. If the restaurant is packed, no. but people say it sucks, do you believe it? No. No. If I they would. say it's <laughs> awesome, I, I understand why you would. No, I mean, I've I, been to a restaurant that got rave reviews and it didn't I, have good food. If a restaurant is typically bad, it's empty. Yep. Yeah. If a restaurant is good, it's full. Unless the ambiance is great. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. So I CNN would. is CNN is the restaurant that's empty and Fox is full right now. Unfortunately, for some people, do we have and, ratings numbers to look at? Oh my! Of, it, can you, Tyler? Let can you Tucker pull it up? It out. Tucker Carlson is the most watched show up. on television. Isn't pull it, up Tyler? ratings. Well, that's Tyler, sad, it? and I don't well, I mean, care for Tucker. It's sad. Don't, I mean, don't, don't just pull up Tucker. Just pull, pull up rating for all. Uh, Wait, but uh, how is this helping Iran? No, no, right but now. you just said you. No, you brought up Black <laughs> no, Lives Matter. Up. I didn't bring it up. You said Black Lives Matter. You I brought never up once, CNN. I never once said Black Lives Matter. You no, said Black Lives Matter. You brought up CNN. So from Black Lives no, Matter, we I went said, into stories. No, no, you asked. Why are you why, now? Why are you no, concerned no, about this I, now? You asked. You said, "Can we see ratings? We're just delivering finish? for you." No, you said, "Can we why finish for her and show some ratings?" You said, "Why do Iranians vote Democrat?" And I said, "Because of social issues in the United States." And then I listed a few, and you harped on Black Lives Matter. I said LGBTQ rights. I said pro-choice. I, I get that. You and, chose Black Lives Matter. Yeah, sure. I mean, and I then get, we got to CNN somehow, and now we're looking at Tucker Carlson's be, because, ugly face. Because, <laughs> because again, that's the problem. But you see, what you just said right there is, I think the issue. What? I think, I think the issue is, like for example, Stephen A. Smith. I don't know if you know who he is or yep. not. ESPN. Stephen A. ESPN. Smith is the ESPN guy, right? He's like he's like the Stephen A. Smith is like the Tucker of Fox or the Matt out of MSNBC or the Morning Joe yeah, or yeah. I've seen his we know who he is. Yeah, yeah. Right? He, he you know control. what he just did? Let me tell you what he just did, which I, need, I think we need more of this. So he just launches a podcast. Do you know his first guest? No. Chris Cuomo. Okay. Do you know his second guest? Tucker Carlson. Sean Hannity. Sean Hannity. <laughs> well, that's just ratings. <laughs> By the way, no, no, but let me tell you what happened. He's on, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, uh, Jesse Waters. Jesse Waters. With some people love Jesse Waters. Some hate Jesse Waters, right? He was a guy that was part was of Jesse Waters. Jesse Waters was part of Bill O'Reilly's guy that he would go he, man on the street. It was Jesse Waters. Oh, okay. 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 So, anyways, so he does first podcast Chris Cuomo. Second podcast he does with Sean Hannity. He's on Jesse Waters promoting his podcast two days ago. Jesse says, "Am I your favorite host at Fox?" Stephen A. Smith thinks, "No, nah, no, nah, I got it. I'm with Sean Hannity. Sean Hannity is my favorite host at Fox." I was like, what? Hmm. He said that He's on awesome. national television on Fox? Can we pull the clip but, up? But, but can, <laughs> can, I, can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Yeah. 
here's what I love about this. I love that because I think like a guy's asked me a question about this morning. Guys asked me a question about, uh, 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 I don't know. He's asked me a question about LeBron James. What do you think about LeBron James? I think LeBron could be a unifier. He's not. What do you think about Oprah Winfrey? I think she could be a unifier. She's not. You know what made Obama's speech freaking amazing? Which speech? At, at the DNC in 2004. Oh, mm-hmm. What? It was so perfect that they did case studies about it, wrote books about it. Because he says, I don't care if you're from Texas, mm-hmm. you're white, you're black, you're Hispanic, you're this, you're that. This is United States. Let's figure out a way to make it work together, right? Wait, how are LeBron and Oprah not unifying? They're, they're not. They're, they're no way. You think LeBron's a unifier in America? No how? way. How are in they? the NBA, you you have to be a Democrat to be in the NBA. Oh, of course, the NBA. You know, name me a one open uh, Republican in the NBA. Go ahead, I'll wait. I not <laughs> because there is. Well, I just don't yeah. follow them that closely <laughs> right no, no. now, so but, I couldn't but, tell but you. But there's none. But you know how it is in baseball. Hmm. No one gives a shit. Nobody mm-hmm. cares. Like no one gives a shit. The best players in baseball are like, dude, let's just play the game. Mm-hmm. Let's just talk. You know, nobody's you, making basketball political. Oh what do you mean? Are you gosh. crazy? No. You, you, China, you know what? Oh, but you don't follow it. But you don't follow it. Can you pull up the ratings? She's asking for ratings. You're taking your time. Yeah, she asked you rating. three times. <laughs> damn it. Wait, okay. I just don't I see how this is helping Iran. What does this have to do with Iran? Can you tell me this title honestly? All I know is LeBron James is a unifier. Show me the stats first. Hey, I like LeBron James, so. I Show mean. me the stats. Show me the stats if you have it for ratings for everybody. It's not like this one. The one that shows well, everyone. Well, CNN is also, I feel like, in flux. They fired a bunch of people and they're trying to figure out their vibe. Why they're do you like, think are they're we going to go? But it was like that a year ago. Are we going to go left, ago. right, center? They're going to be super central. By the way, but do you know why CNN was like. The, I'm not defending CNN. I understand by the way. it. What I'm saying to you is what made CNN so powerful is a guy named Ted Turner started it. Yeah. And you know how we finished it in this book? The last chapter of his book, everybody has to read. He's the one guy I do want to interview, but unfortunately, he's not in good health conditions. We're in communication with his camp. He, we'd love to interview him. He's, he's in a different place. When his book ends, what it talks about is how disappointed he is in the current product because it's only one-sided. Mm-hmm. You don't hear air, both sides of the story. So it's is no, Fox News. I, I understand you're saying so is Fox News, but Fox will actually do some digging and tell some stuff. CNN blindly says, nope. I don't Russia- agree with you at okay, all. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Three years, everybody in America thought Russia hoax, Russia was a real deal. None of it was. They came what do you mean Russia was a real Russia, deal? Russia, 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 Russia uh, Trump. Russia collusion with Trump. You don't think abs- that anything to do with the election? It's not a matter of thinking. Well, I'm not going to get into that because it has nothing to do with Iran. But. It's, it's, not, it's not that we say that. Again, but I think this has a lot to do with Iran. I think this has everything to do with Iran, if you How ask so? me. I'll, I'll answer to you. I think it has to do with Iran because... Um, in order for there to be progress, we all have to question why we believe what we believe in, mm-hmm. how much of it is brainwashing, how much of it is the way we were brought up, how much of it is true. How, I was an atheist 25 years of my life, purely. I almost became a Scientologist because mm. I went to Scientology churches regularly. Mm. I almost became a Mormon because I was around incredible Mormon people, fantastic Mormon people. When I tell you great Phenomenal Mormon people around me. So I said, let me look into this. Then I went and looked at Judaism. I looked at Jehovah seven day. I was curious. Mm -hmm. I'm going out there looking for it. And I'm like, my dad wasn't going to church. My mother was not, you know, wasn't like part of our, you know, like everyday life. We've, I don't remember ever doing a Bible study. I don't remember ever doing, sitting down and saying, okay, kids, let's talk about, you know, you know, such and such. No, nothing, nothing Mm -hmm. like that. And then one day I'm like, you know what, this is what I want to do politically. My dad was a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a uh, uh, imperialist. Mother was a communist. Kind of a family thing you raised in. That's a confusing communist. Divorced yeah. twice in 20 years. Hmm. Parents got divorced twice in 20 years. Our parents, you know how you see all these guys, Frisbee people that are throwing Frisbees down? They threw you know, plates like Frisbees in our house. It was so entertaining. Hmm. They could play Frisbee with plates. It was so fascinating, mm-hmm. our family. It was a very mm-hmm. peaceful marriage that they yeah, had. Yeah, yeah. Sounds so, like it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just very, very good. So, so the point I'm trying to make is on why this has to do with that, I think we all have to question. Every time somebody <laughs> says we can't say, uh, Fox said it, it's got to be true. If CNN said it, it's got to be true. If this person said it, it's got to be true. Because if CNN's restaurant is empty, there is a reason. That's fine to say that, yeah. but I will never agree with the fact that Fox doesn't give you news with a slant. It's clearly biased. Of course and they do. I didn't say they don't. Okay. No, I, of course they do. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying they don't. Right. I never said. Are they you just don't. talking ratings? 
but 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 here's which here, I still but, haven't seen. But here's the part. Uh, <laughs> I'll pull it up by the while you're there, going through there this it is. because. <laughs> There this isn't the one. There's a ranking that they do. That yeah. Well, so this, pretty bad. This 2.189. Okay, so let's go through this one. MSNBC Fox, second one. Fox News Channel cruise to victory in third quarter. Cable news rating delivering an average prime audience of 2.2 million. I see. Yeah, uh, yeah. Easily outpacing <laughs> MSNBC, which was distant second to 1.27 seven million. They're also and very sensationalist, and that draws the, a crowd. Oh my god. That's what I think. So you were sensationalist with the New York Times. So you said you suck. They and were. I, but I loved it. Because, because it's true. But yeah, That article sucked. So, so guess what? You were right. You can be sensationalist and right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. I don't I, think Fox I, is right, though. But no, they are right. They are right. They are right. Yeah, they are right. <laughs> <laughs> but again, again, I think my, my, my biggest thing is I've interviewed seven communists because mm-hmm. I want to talk to people that disagree with we me. We should talk to people that disagree with me. And I, th- I think you should go and sit down and talk to Tucker Carlson. I think if, I would love if that. If Tucker guys- Carlson... <laughs> Have me on. <laughs> he would regret it, but it would be great TV. Uh, I think. I, I think. I think you're underestimating the power of a very uh, strong uh, debater who knows his world very well and knows the other person's world as well. Sure. Uh, very well. I think guys like him. I think the opposite of him was John Stewart at his peak. Mm-hmm. I love John Stewart. Love John Stewart. I love John Stewart, but I also love Tucker. It's so weird. I'm confusing. Do not like. Yeah, I yeah. understand. Yeah, but I think I love both. Well, you go in the middle of the road a lot. But I, but I, I veer this way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's totally fine. Yeah. And again, all I'm saying is, I think if we're gonna go, my my challenge right now is, if we're going in the direction that we're going with Iran, I would like to say, listen, you like the Lakers, I like the Clippers, mm-hmm. but we both love Iran. Is that okay if we just yeah. unify in this area and we say great high five? Yeah. Sure. We're scored away, right? So we don't sure. have to agree on everything, but yeah. let's agree on this one thing that we would like to see democracy coming back to Iran. Let me finish this data because I hate to have guests on you and I don't finish the numbers, yeah, which was ahead. third <laughs> overall 717 amongst 25 of the key demographics, Fox News. Outpaced them too. Now, by the way, this must be a foxnews.com website. Yeah, what oh, you, don't, no, you don't want to see the foxnews.com. Fox Wait, also, what is this? I feel like you think I'm like Forbes. on the board of CNN or like my uncle owns it. I'm no, not I, I like, you know. No, I don't think that. But what I do think is, what I do think is, I think you're a very uh, uh, powerful, you, just look what happened to you in the last week. And, and to me, you know, you said something. You said most of us are kind of like, you know, careful on what we say. Different reasons. Some has to do with career, the industry you're part of. You got to be careful because, you know, uh, maybe family traditions, values, Wait, the risk. Wait, careful that what I say about what? Not you. I'm saying you said at the beginning, you yeah. said, I said, you know, you were very vocal recently. Right. You said, I've always been not this vocal, but, you know, right. some, the risk yes. of your career. You said some comments. Not my career. Not, it was, you, yeah, you said fear. different people have different fears yes. of what they say. Yes. Some For some, it is career. Yes. Not sure. you. For some, it could be yeah. career. Yeah. yeah. But I think there's some people that got a voice who are minor in uh, media, you know, criticism that mm-hmm. should use the voice more often. And I think it's good for society. I you think know? you guys like when I use my voice when you like what I'm saying. No, I, I, oh. but but I but I, I don't care what you say that I disagree with. I yeah. want you to say it. Yeah. And then I want us to have a friendly debate and let uh, let the 100%. audience decide. And we I don't care if you agree, if I agree with you or not. Believe yeah. me, I've had criminals here. I've had mobsters here. I've had people I fully don't agree with. But I want to poke and ask the question, and then the audience says, screw you, Pat. I agree with them. I don't know. No problem. It's good to go. You get to decide for yourself. Look, I don't like Tucker. You like Tucker, but we want freedom for Iran. But, so there you go. But, but, <laughs> I got guys, one in two. We're making friends today. <laughs> yes. So this is uh, Friends 101. Find areas of agreement. Common ground. Yes. Which Common is ground. Iran. So now let's go back and finish it up with the last 10, 15 minutes that we have here. Yeah. Uh, uh, how optimistic are you guys? How optimistic are you with... Uh, how things are uh, going right now. Obviously, it's day 25 for us. All we're doing is talking about is day yeah. 25. For the people in there, it's day 25. And day 25 comes with a lot of suffering and challenges and losses and a lot of different mess. It's ugly, right? How optimistic are you that this could be the one? I know we talked about it briefly a minute ago, but how optimistic are you that this could actually be the one that leads to a bigger thing that eventually we can go back to Iran? Morteza, we'll start with you. I got 200%. 200%. 200%. So go to Vegas, bet on the odds, 200%. Absolutely. We're going to be in Iran next year. That's what Absolutely. you're saying. Absolutely. You think these, so? You're that confident? These people have nothing to lose. Yeah. I had a message for uh, martial artists, generally, and men in Iran. When uh, all we can do is all we can do. I cannot go back in the country. I'm prohibited to uh, go back in. But if I could, Patrick, I wouldn't wait here one minute. 
Because I believe, seriously, I'm, I'm telling you. I so told we have my, to get I, our insurance license and no, go I, on. I told my, yeah, <laughs> we're going to have a branch over there. That's a different conversation, <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I told my uh, daughter, I told my son, if I could go, you, would, you wouldn't see me 25 days ago. I would be there. Wow. Because I feel this is a time, it's a responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Especially for my generation that mm. somehow we didn't do what we supposed to do in our time in 79 happened, we have to pay our dues to the kids 12, yeah. 14 years old, putting yeah. their life in their hands and in the street, they're getting bullet. And that so-and-so men or martial artists sitting at home and waiting to see, you know, smoke goes away and then show up. It's ridiculous. It's a sh such a shame, such a shame. We have to go in now. Otherwise we're gonna regret. Patrick, if this regime stays after this event, God forbid and God forbid, I don't want to even think about it. Yeah. Nobody can remove them anymore. I, I, I we don't, become worse than North Korea. I think it'll be bad, my opinion. I don't know if it's permanent. Like you said, 1,400, 275, you know, the whole thing you were saying earlier. But here's what my worries are with that is $400 billion, 25 years. China's going to own Iran. That's the four hundred billion dollar agreement, twenty five years. Iran so, was very upset about that too. Yeah, but very but you know they took the money. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like All the so people were upset. I know. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, we're on the same page. Yeah, yeah, I know. But that's my that, the reason why. You know, how everybody's like, this is the election. Why you should vote for Hillary? If I should vote for Trump? Because this is a different. Everybody says the same script, mm -hmm. right? But I believe this is like the real one because you don't want to be owned by China. That's exactly. my biggest concern. Because if we do, guess what? Next time I want to be able to go fly in there and see my family 25, 68 years from now. 68 years from now, it's a long time from now. I'd like to go in the next 12 to 24 months and not have to worry about my life when I go there. So, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. We're going how, together. How long do you guys think this is? Because I mean, they're on 25 days and I wish them all the best. How long do you think this goes for? How long do you think that they You mean this protesting? This like protesting how long this is going right to last? Now. How do you Because yeah. I mean, it can't, I'm not, it's, I mean, it's going to stop. But at some, you, I, I don't I want it to. I mean, because they're, they're, they're going to be in the streets until these people are shooting and killing. And you were talking about it, the youth. The, it's the young ones that are stepping they're up. They're getting and, killed. And they're getting the, killed. So no. I just, I, I, let I, me answer you this way. There's a famous saying in Persian. Mm -hmm. They say, when Mullah get on the donkey, doesn't come down until the donkey dies. Mm -hmm. This thing is not going to get over soon. I hope yeah. not. They are going to put so much blood in the, on mm -hmm. the street. And mm -hmm. guess what? Freedom has a price. <clears throat> Freedom has a price, and if you don't pay the price, we're not gonna get it. I agree. Well, and to was it your point or your point? You said you're, we're not there. That's what. That's the thing that's very upsetting is we know what it takes for something to change, and it's a terrible feeling to sit here and feel helpless and just watch our countrymen get killed, knowing what they're fighting for, knowing we all, all we can do is amplify their voices. There was uh, something that came out today. One of the mullahs said, um, and he's known for, uh, they're all hardliners, but he's known for just being a hardliner um, his whole career. He said something like, it was translated as in, whatever grievances you all have, um, I'm open to talking about it. I saw this briefly when I got off the plane. So that's a shows a crack, maybe a crack and they're getting really, they're showing that they're worried. Like, oh, okay, we, maybe if we make some concessions, but the people have had it. They're not trying, they're not in there for yeah. reform. Yeah. They're for change, that's regime right. change, democracy, that's secularism. Right. No, there, there's the, the the moment you make concessions, they're going to go back to the same situation. And again. this hijab issue is so it was one of the pillars of the Islamic Revolution. So they know the regime knows if these women keep because you know there's all these videos. These girls are now women are walking around Iran without mm -hmm. their headscarves, mm -hmm. and people are filming it. If they lose this issue, they know that it's only a matter of time till the whole thing crumbles because that's yeah. the one. Because then everyone's like, okay, well now we're not wearing this. Okay, well now I want my equal rights too. Yep. My I want my word to be a woman's wor uh, word is only worth 50% of a man's in court. She can't sing in public alone. She can't travel without permission of her husband. She can't get educated without the permission of her husband. If she wants to get a divorce, it's not up to her. She mm -hmm. loses custody immediately. I'm all There's a lot of things around it that they're fighting for. So they know once the head job goes, because that's the biggest, most uh, obvious form of oppression, everything else is going to crumble. And that's why I think they're starting to, we heard somebody say, oh, okay, maybe we should, maybe we can talk about this, guys. Like they're like, oh, maybe we can talk about this. I hope they don't negotiate. No, no, no one's. I, I don't. I, I don't hope see that. they don't negotiate. It's if past you, the form. Nobody wants reform. They're not yeah. saying reform. They're saying regime change. Yeah. That's what they're saying in the streets. So, Paulette. Um, 
when you were talking about when you when we talked about CNN and Fox and um, what does it have to do with Iran? It has a lot to do with Iran because the news media is not speaking the truth. That Everything they're talking about, they're like, oh, you know, this person committed suicide. That person had heart and condition. So people are being fed that that misinformation and they're learning it from the best. Well, CNN, I said, like I said, in the last week has been, Jake Tapper has been accurately reporting information. Um, and if that's what you guys meant by what does it have to do with Iran, I totally agree. Of course, the media coverage is not enough. We still need more. Everybody's, I mean, my friends, none of us are journalists by trade. We're all in the arts or, or doctors, lawyers. Everyone in the diaspora is like being the news right now because the news isn't doing their job. Yeah, I mean, right now, that's the, I think that's the great equalizer. The great equalizers, we're actually seeing it. Like these clips, you know, how every time I see these videos where it says, uh, uh, you know, such and such content, see why. And then, hey, mm -hmm. you click to watch it. There's some, it says something. Oh, like yeah, the, uh, warning. Yeah, it's warning, some kind of a warning. And then you like that, yeah. click on it and then you watch it. You're saying to yourself, this is this is not a movie. This is real. Someone's really going through this in Iran right now. And that's happening. It's getting suppressed on social media very oddly, too, because and I think it's people from the other side reporting people's accounts uh, uh, that if you even open some of the stuff that says it's distressing, it's actually just like an article that uses the word wow. kill or death or murder. I had a couple posts up that I was literally just translating what they were chanting in the street and my account was reported because it was like promoting violence. Wow. And, and, I, and I wrote to Meta and I, I know someone that knows people at Meta and they got it taken care of, which is you guys have to understand Persian translations to this wasn't me saying, let's go kill people. Oh, I'm literally yeah. just translating a yeah. slogan. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the way, mean. that's yeah. suppression. That's Unbelievable. Yeah. I do wow. believe, I'll give them benefit of the doubt, that they just didn't have the mechanism in place, yeah. and now it's in place. The and let's so, work. yeah, yeah. So let's give them benefit of the doubt, and hopefully that stuff doesn't happen reinstated again. you, though. You're back. You, I never got blocked. That post got taken I out. got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think there needs to be more famous, bigger names that are going to stand in the front and and help them because I'm not really hearing anybody. There's you, a lot of celebrity. Well, from, of Iranian, or or I'm talking about like oh like if a LeBron or Iran? somebody stood up and was like, hey, listen, look well, what's happening. A lot more eyes because I'm not gonna lie, I'm not seeing a lot of it. I mean, I'm seeing it because I'm you know my mom and dad are from Iran and I'm a Syrian, but I want to see some big. I haven't heard any big names really getting involved. Really Wait, in America? In Amer I, I have Kim Kardashian, Dua Lipa, the Hadid sisters, um, Ruby Rose, Viola Davis. I can keep going. Yeah, they, but, I mean, I, but like I said, you I haven't been them. seeing it. Yes, well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Where is it? I don't see it in the news because if, like, if somebody that big to me was going to be on We're reposting it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the problem. I yeah. want to see somebody yeah. really step up and really start, you Kim know, Kardashian, Kim Kardashian dedicated her whole, oh, uh, Fashion Houses did it a few days ago. Balenciaga, Alexander McQueen, Gucci, mm -hmm. they all posted yep, uh, Zan Zendig mm -hmm. we stand mm -hmm. with the women of Iran. So it's happening. Start, start good. Yeah. This is great, man. Yeah. Just telling you, like, if this thing keeps, you know, momentum doesn't happen overnight. It, it takes a minute. It's been momentum. building. Yeah, it's been building. No, no question about yeah. it. I mean, again, credit goes to the people that are in Iran. Of course, yeah. they get all the credit. Uh, I, I just, I just hope these people that, you know, you know, so one of the things I was thinking about, you know how you said the Shah should have never left? Uh, 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 if, if, you know, Khomeini was never in Iran and he still was able to do the revolution that it took place without having to be in Iran, right? Uh, you know, like I'm trying to get a hold of a, a, we talked about him earlier, Ali, to speak to him. Do you think it's safe for a guy like that to stay there? Do you think it's safe for him to stay there? Or it's maybe not a bad idea for him to go to Rome or go to Dubai, which is only a 45-minute flight? For who? who? Uh, Ali Karimi or some of those he's guys. He's not in Iran. Where is he in he Dubai? Oh, he's, oh, he's definitely in Dubai. Dubai. Okay, I got, he can't be in Iran, no. right? No. Okay, wow. I got you. Yeah. Not after what he said. Yeah. He would have, I don't think he could have said that inside there without mm -hmm. fearing for... Yeah, there, there's there's uh, some guys like that. I'm glad he's not. I thought he was in Iran no, because no. we're trying to message him and, you know, some I people tried, are saying you're not going to be able to get a hold of him. Different yeah. different that's good. I, just the fact that there's people like that that are talking, it's good and it's exciting that this momentum's taking place. And uh, we appreciate you guys coming out. This was a great conversation. Our audience is not a big Iranian community. You know, it's like they're, they're maybe less than 1% of 1% Persian. You know, mm. the podcast is different content, which is even better because people who don't really follow this exactly. story now got a, you know, a, a good clinic on what's really taking place from different perspectives. Watch uh, the Patrick, on this banner, we're keeping it on the bridge of the culverts. And telling us. <laughs> Go ahead. On the culverts, when traffic comes, 
thousands of cars they're honking that yeah. we're looking at them from the up. They're like white. Yeah. They're like black. They're, they're, they're not Persian. And they see these banners. They're like, it, it's becoming very popular, this thing. Be getting people's attention. Yes. So, somebody said they're, they're trying to do an event at U- YouTube Arena with six 7,000 people where they're bringing da- you know, Darius and people like that to In perform. In L.A.? Yeah. There's something being planned. Is I there? I, I want to go to it. I'll tell you when okay. it gets Okay. Final. No, the only reason I'm saying this, there is something I'm open to the idea of renting out Staples I Center send, doing a one-day full event. I send your message. And we stay live all day. That'd be yeah. awesome. Listen, if any of these guys would have any interest and they're close to any of the main, like I'm thinking like 12 hours straight concert, performing, talking, bring the youngest rappers from Daryush to Gugush Maybe to the youngest, everybody. to every one of them, and do a one-day full. We rent out the Staples Center and put on a nice AV team and... 100% of the money that comes in goes to whatever charity we can trust or form of helping, you know, where, you know, we're able to do something with that. And uh, people can keep giving. We'll create a 1-800 number and show live exactly how much money we're raising. You know, right. that's not going to be hard. We There's can do also that actually, in the next 7 to 14 days, in the well, next week or two. I'll tell you that about that offline. Okay. But also, there's a group um, of people that I know, too. It's, it's a large collective. I don't know everybody in it. It's Iranians based mostly out of... Los Angeles, I think, um, that have started this GoFundMe, and they're raising funds to buy ad space and billboards uh, in media, different media markets so that they can get the word out because it's not being reported on. So that's also happening, too. I like that other angle. I, I like us, like, if there's a, if we know where the money goes to, yeah. it's too many times you're given money, like, to places where it's like, the money doesn't do, yeah. like, the whole $900,000 of Black Lives, you want the money to go to a place that you know what they're going to be doing with it. Big people that the just raising money about? for the that banners? Is, that, that is, is the, the one. one. Okay, there you go. Put Not banners, below. Uh, ad, ad space and media space. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Well, folks, hopefully, uh, you know, if you didn't have any plans about le- learning more about Iran, you just did because we had five people that are Iranian here and we, we were equal opportunity. He's hairy, we had he's Tyler hairy here, enough. He's who by is here with us. Tyler, honestly, your commentary tonight was the best. I, by was far, amazing. your commentary Took was fantastic. Took you a little long to get that data for me, but... <laughs> <laughs> you're talking to the best in the business here. I think you, you were. It, I we think you were doing it on purpose, but that's we okay. We were up and rocking. Mm-hmm. He's trying to be friendly to you. He's trying to be nice. He wants you to leave with a good experience. He doesn't want you to leave your upset. He's like, I love Tucker Carlson. <laughs> <Yeah>. He's my <laughs> uncle. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, uh, no, because uh, he's your uncle. <laughs> no, we're like, that's, his last name is Tyler Carlson. No, oh, snap. No, Dude, that would be hilarious. She becomes the director of that HBO documentary, and you're related <laughs> yeah. to Tucker Carlson. Yeah, great. Okay, uh, having said that, thank you for coming out. Thank you for having me. Thank Appreciate you, thank you, everybody, thank for coming you. out. This was fantastic. Folks, it was nice to meet have you a guys. great day. Are we doing podcast tomorrow morning? We got podcast potentially. Podcast yeah, morning. we're doing yep. podcast tomorrow morning. Home and team. Home team, we're just talking uh, uh, current events. Okay, fantastic. Have a good one, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. Thank you, dude. Thank you.